Why do you want to tell stories? Why do you want to create? Why? Is it because you have a drive in you? I know I do. But sometimes in the darkness of the night, I wonder if that drive is for more than just creative satisfaction. Let's talk about that on today's Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love. Yeah, today we're talking about three things that we creatives just don't talk about that much. At least not openly. Money, fame, and the quest for immortality. Yeah, we going there. But before we do, if you haven't already, please do take a moment to rate this podcast and whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. It tells the pod- it tells the apps and the algorithms to share the podcast with more people. And the more people that listen, the bigger the community, the bigger the community, the more chance we have of actually communicating with each other. And after all, that's why I do this in the first place. Thank you to everybody who's already done that. Alrighty, let's just get down to it. I know... We all say, because I say it all the time, that I write because I have an urge. I have an itch. I draw because I have an itch. There's something deep down inside me that just has to get out. And I know that's true. I'm not lying. Because when I don't write, when I just let it build up inside me, my brain gets foggy. There's so much going on in there, I can't think, I can't make decisions, I can't get anything done. I gotta let the story out. It's like Athena in the head of Zeus. It's just in there, scratching and clawing and making everything painful until... Oh, that Hephaestus cracks your head open and lets her out fully formed. At least that's how it is for me. And I love writing. I love telling stories. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do. I like drawing. I like doing pictures. I like all of it. But let's be honest with ourselves. There's another side to that coin too. Yeah, we may have that drive. We may have that urge. But a lot of us put on that hat of writer, artist, creative, podcaster, YouTuber, whatever it is. Because we want three other things that may not be so good for us. See, a lot of us, and when I say that, you know I'm really talking about myself, have this dark, sinister, secret desire to have money, to have fame, and to find some little piece of immortality, some little thing that will survive you in this world. We look at people that have come before us that we're still talking about and we hope maybe my work will outlast me. Maybe when I'm long gone, I won't be forgotten and my work will live on. Maybe I can have that little bit of fame and everybody will know my name and all those people in high school who said bad things to me, they'll turn around and they'll realize that they were wrong. That all my eccentricities and all the strange things about me were just preparing me for greatness. And they just didn't see it at the time. Maybe we just want some money. Maybe, like me, you grew up not necessarily poor, but not well off. In that lower chunk of the middle class. And you want a better life for yourself. And you keep... Doing that terrible thing where you're like, one day I'm going to have kids. But before that can even ever happen, i got to make sure that I can do right by them. Yeah. Sometimes we get distracted by the world. Sometimes we don't even realize that the things that we're doing are actually from these more selfish places. Because it feels so altruistic to say, I just have my story and I want to share it with the world. 
I have this vision that I think other people need to see. It feels like we're being giving, loving, wonderful people. And I'm not saying that we're not. I'm just saying we need to be very careful because those demons are in the back of our head. That greed that wants more money. That avarice that wants more fame and gets jealous of our friends and co-workers and fellow laborers in the fields of toil who find a little bit or at least a little bit more than we got and you feel that jealousy rising up inside those long nights where we sit up wondering if anybody's ever going to remember these stories or if we're just wasting our time shouting words into the wind yeah, we've all had those moments, whether we admit it to ourselves or not, whether we realize it or not. They're there, crawling deep down inside. And yes, while this is one of those times where I would normally get on my soapbox and talk about that's the problem with it, the capitalist infrastructure that we're currently in, that we have to make money, that really isn't the problem here. The problem is that we don't admit it to ourselves, and sometimes when we do admit it to ourselves, we then allow it to blind us. Because once you realize that, yeah, I would like to make a living out of doing this work. Well, making a living can blind us to the quality of the work that we do, because let's be honest, it's easy to crank out a whole bunch of books really, really quickly with a formulaic plot that we know will sell than it is to craft something that we're proud of. It's easy in this internet age to get famous, infamous, notorious. How much difference is there between those words these days? You can get mad at somebody, get somebody mad at you, start some beef yeah, that's a good way to get your name out there. Because let's be honest, being famous isn't about re what you're famous for, really. It's, it's about having people know your name, know that people are talking about you, isn't it? That's really what we're after when we're seeking after fame. Oh, then there's the quest for immortality. Oh, the self-sabotage that goes into our work. When we tell ourselves that this is the story that everybody's going to remember me for. This is the story that's going to make it. And so we get pompous and full of ourselves and sometimes preachy. Oh, I know I'm guilty of that. I don't know if you are or not. Maybe you're better than me. A lot of people are. But yeah, I have my moments of weakness. I have my moments of self-doubt. I have my moments of greed where I just want to make some money. I want people to know my name. And I want to write a story that touches people so deeply it will be remembered forever. None of those things are under our control. People will tell you that they are, and those people are lying. Well, they're not really lying. Yeah, there are things that we can do to try to make our work sell. We can have a good cover. We can make sure we edited it well. We can do ads in the right places to get the word out. We can get reviews. We can, you know, make sure people know the book is there because that is 90%, if not 99% of the problem. It's just getting people to know that you exist. But getting people to know you exist means you've got to have a little bit of fame, doesn't it? See how these start feeding one into the other? You want to make money, but to make money, people got to know who you are. And to know who you are, you got to have a little bit of fame. And if you're going to have a little bit of fame, you might as well be remembered for something. Something that will outlast you and span the decades, the centuries. Make your mark. And there we go around, round and round, in the great Aurorbris. And you might not realize that that's even happening in the back of your head. I know when I'm thinking about some of the stories that I'm 
in between right now when I'm trying to choose what work I should be doing. I actually find myself arguing over whether the this idea or that idea might be too commercial. Because you see, if it's too commercial, then will people really resonate with it? Yeah, it might make me some money, but will it last forever? Because uh, see, these ideas are opposed to one another. See, you got to do art, and art is selfless and touches people and is moving. And it brings out all those pompous feelings in ourselves that are kind of anti-commercial. But making money brings out all of our commercial instincts, which tells us that we should be doing market research and writing what's selling and doing our best to hit those trends as hard as we can. Back and back we go. Because it's not really back and forth, because it's just sending us cartwheeling backwards. Because we all want to make a living off of our work. That way we can do more of it. But this cycle will destroy us if we let it. So how do we break the wheel? Well, it's easy, isn't it? You get on the back of your dragon, you go crazy, and you just destroy a small town, a large town, and, you know, everybody in it, man, woman, and child, and then get stabbed in the chest by your nephew lover. I guess. You know, maybe I shouldn't be taking life advice from Dan and Dave. Because there are times when I feel like they don't quite understand. But that that's a topic that we've covered in the past. And who knows, I might get up in a rage and cover it again. But no, this cycle is paralysis. We've been talking about writer's block so far this week, and I don't know if I want to continue on this theme, but whether it's having too many ideas or not enough ideas, when you really dig down into it, a lot of the time, not all the time, sometimes there's other issues. I know my biggest writer's block come from the times that I'm suffering from depression. When my symptoms and depressive states really get on the rise, it's hard for me to be creative, it's hard for me to do anything. But... That's not the most common reason I have a hard time putting words down. And when you actually dig down deep into why you're currently having problems putting the words down, at least for me, and I'm the only one that can I can speak for because I'm not inside your head, but I'm wondering how much you're like me on this. It's because I'm worried that this story isn't going to make me enough money. It's not going to pay the bills. It's not going to cover the gap. It's not going to get me new patrons on Patreon. Maybe if I don't do this story just right, or maybe if I do that story instead, more people will share it, and in sharing, they'll spread the word about me. See, we tell ourselves, at least I know I tell myself a lot of the time, that my creative issues are a problem with my creativity that my imagination just isn't working but no it's this cycle of is this book worthy of the legacy that I want to leave in this world is this the book that's going to make me enough money that I can do some of the other things that I'm wanting to do is this book going to get my name out there enough that I can get Netflix or Amazon Prime to notice me so I can get my series on. Those aren't loud voices. And that's why I think a lot of us don't realize that they're there. Because those voices are easy to ignore when they get loud. Oh, I'll get a contract if I get a contract. Because I'll probably need to get an agent first and dot, 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 dot. You know, there's a process and steps to making all those things happen. They're hard, they're difficult, they're tricky, but there's a process there. So if we knew that that was the problem, if we knew that those were the things that were actually holding us back, well then, we could ignore them. We could cast them aside. We could sit them down and go, no, no, that's not the one, and get through it and get things done. 
No, they hide themselves under other concerns. And very simple concerns. Is, is, is this work good enough? See, the sentence doesn't get finished. It's not, is this work good enough to give me an immortal legacy that will make me famous and rich and outlast me? No, it just gets shorthanded to, is this good enough? Good enough for what? What is good enough? There are books out there that sell hundreds of thousands of copies that I can't finish the first page of. I couldn't finish the first chapter. I definitely couldn't read the whole series. Now, I can go on and pontificate forever about how those books were not good books. What's a good book? They sold hundreds of thousands of copies and have avid fan bases. Somebody obviously liked them. Somebody thinks they're good books, whether I do or not. Because see, good book is not as objective as we want it to be. No. That's not really what it is. What does good enough mean? Good enough means good enough to last forever and get me a little bit of that fame over there. But we don't say the whole thing because it sounds egotistical. It sounds like we're full of ourselves, that we're puffing our chests out and thinking that we're bigger and better and badder than we are. And of course, when that amount of ego shows itself, it's easy to swat it down for most of us. So it hides. Is it good enough to make me money? Some of us think that question outright. But most of us don't finish the question. We just stop at, is it good enough? Is it the right story to make me money? Is it the right story to get me famous? Is it the right story to last forever? Oh, I don't know where to go with this. I don't know what the next chapter should be, what the next scene should be, what the next line should be. Because if I don't write the right one, I'm not going to get that money, that fame, that immortality, that deep down inside I secretly want, but I don't admit to myself that I want it. So I don't know that that's what's holding me back. You might think that, no, I'm not one of those people. I don't care about my work lasting forever, or making a lot of money off of it, or being famous. Because trust me, I tell myself that all the time. I mean, honestly, I give a lot of my books away for free. So why would I care about money if I would do that? I mean, that, that kind of proves that I don't want the money, right? But I also sometimes buy ads to get the word out about my books. I, I push them. I talk to people about them all the time. I start every podcast telling you the name of my most recent book in hopes that some of you will buy it. Because deep down inside, I, I do want a little bit of that money. I do want a little bit of that fame. I just don't want to admit it to myself. And this is how we defeat writer's block. And one of the reasons why I say that writer's block isn't a real thing. Because a lot of it is just the paralysis that comes when these little demon questions enter our mind. And ask us, is this good enough to last forever? Is this good enough to make me famous? Is this good enough to make me money? But they don't finish the sentence. Because if they finish the sentence, we could ignore them. So we got to figure out, we got to learn how to discern these concerns that are coming up inside us. Because whether you know it or not, it's probably one of those three things. Yeah, it might be your anxiety. It might be your depression. Trust me, I know those too. Those are real. Those happen. I'm not saying that every instance of a block or having your Molary Curly Syndrome is one of these three things. But, a lot of the time, that's what it is. We just don't realize it. We don't want to realize it. We don't want to see it. Because if we do, then that puts us in a category that we're often not comfortable seeing ourselves in. 
None of us wants to see ourselves as a money grubber or somebody who's greedy. None of us want to see ourselves as a fame seeker or somebody who hopes that their work will be taught in school with Dickens and Shakespeare. Yeah, but that's often in there. And when we learn which of those secret motivations are actually causing our problems, it goes a long way towards getting rid of them. So be honest with yourself. What are you secretly after? What is the whispered part of that sentence? When that little demon in your head says this isn't good enough, or I don't know what comes next. You might be surprised by your answer. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, and you haven't already, please take a moment to rate this podcast on whatever app you're listening to me on. It really does help out a lot. If you've got a dollar you can pass my way, in the show notes you'll find a link to both my Patreon and the Community Support tab on Anchor. Difference between the two is people on Patreon occasionally get stuff. And I mean occasionally. (laughs) Working on it. If you don't have any money right now, or you don't feel like joining the project, that's fine. But if you know somebody that would like this podcast, do share it with them. That helps out a lot, too. I want to thank everybody for listening. It really does help out a lot. If you have any questions comments or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show down in the show notes you'll find a link no you won't because i don't put it in there Um, anywho if you want to oh yes you will find a link for the community for the uh voice message system see i'm all kinds of crazy today you'll find a link for the voice message system keep it short keep it clean so i can use it on the show i would love to answer your questions and your comments if you you would rather hit me up on social media i'm ce dorset on twitter and instagram you can find links to those and everything that i do over at projectshadow.com yeah that's it until next time don't forget have the fun bye